Hey everyone, welcome, welcome to today's Full Art Secrets podcast episode. I am Spencer Walker, CEO of Dental Auto Machine, and we have Robin Dackman on here, closing trainer and professional extraordinaire. She's created our Full Art Closing Certification Program, and I know of no one better that teaches how to take a patient from being a lead out there on the internet and get them into a consultation and into saying yes and moving forward and you know, financially qualified. Robin is an expert and authority in this, and we're so grateful to have her on our team and to discuss what we're talking about today. So Robin, we have been on this journey to teach doctors and their teams how to, well, the full arch framework, right? And yeah. within the third pillar of that, there's the closing architecture. And I frequently tell people this is 80% of your success is uh, getting your system in place, building your team and making sure they are very well trained. Recently, you and I have been going through this and discussing how to do that, right? So mm -hmm. I just wanted to take, we're kind of midway through this process and we've been doing a number of these episodes, but they kind of bring everybody up to date. We've talked about, we're kind of laying out the system and talking about like, okay, what do you do and when do you do it? And then simultaneously telling people how to do it at the same time, right? It's like, here's your instruction book on what to do. But then also like, how do you do that really effectively, those things? And so we talked about, let me see here, going back through the notes here, the patient arrival, summarize that initial first impression and get people welcome into your practice and into the consultation, bringing that anxiety down. We're going to readdress that today as we talk okay. about the scan, like why did the scan later versus, you know, initially a lot of doctors do it or a lot of teams do it. You walk in the door and immediately you're sticking your head in a machine and how that can spike anxiety and so cortisol. Yeah. The cortisol, right? And then also that we're right. in the word over and feels uncomfortable going into this discussion rather than showing up and having a nice soft step into it. So patient arrival, patient discovery, this opportunity to engage and connect with somebody emotionally, find out their hurt, their pain, why they're there. Because really, that's the thing that's going to motivate them to move forward and take the next step. Actually committing to doing this treatment, right? Last time we talked about patient education. This is where it's like, okay, I have this problem. And then you come back and say, great, dental implants is the greatest solution in the world for the situation you have. And here's the different options. This is how this works. And here are the different options associated with that. And so we kind of are bridging the gap. Here's the pain. Here's the situation. Here's where they want to be. And then you're presenting implants as the solution and that here's the doctor, the right doctor for you to help you with those implants. Right? Am I missing anything? I think you got it. Good recap of where we are on the map. Yeah. And then today, the kind of the next couple steps are, and this is how, you know, you've taught and outlined this for specific reasons, but the next piece of that, now that you're here, it's like, okay, let's do a practice tour. We're going to introduce you to the practice, get you familiar. Again, you're kind of saying, hey, dental implants is the right solution. We're, I guess psychologically what we're doing is trying to get people to like and trust dental implants and then like and trust the doctor and the team, right? And if they do that, if they come to like and trust both of those, then they are much more likely to move forward to treatment. Now we've just described what implants are. We've shown them. Uh, we've talked about the doctor, why this is important. And now we're going to familiarize them with the kind of the team in the place and the office, right? We are. And move forward from there. So kind of the practice tour and getting the scans. So walk us through that. I love the practice tour. I just want to start off by saying that I have a lot of practices that I go into and they had beautiful facilities, you know, and got amazing artwork. I walked into one practice and the doctor had this, you know, glass blown right when you walk in. And they're not showing off their practice. So I think it's a really great way to to create, you know, a unique value proposition. There's a lot of things unique about practices. And I think it's a really good idea to show off, you know, the patient where everything is going to take place. So I've had practices where I've gone in and this is the first thing they learn out of everything else because it's something that's easy to implement. You can hear me talk to you about this today and do it tomorrow. So it's going to bring a lot of value to everything. The practice tour, you have to remember that we just had that emotive patient discovery conversation where we're having that deep dialogue with the patient about their pain points and everything. We went through the patient education. It's a lot of information to take in. So I think the practice tour is great because it lightens up everything. You can get up, you know, change the atmosphere a little bit. There's a couple of things about it that I love. First of all, if you did not succeed in getting a good 
why or a pain point or vision from the patient, sometimes it just naturally happens on the practice tour while you're built, you know, going to that small talk because they need to get out of that stressful environment and everybody's different. So if I'm struggling to get that with the patient during the patient discovery, you know, you can see when it's starting to get uncomfortable, I'll get up and think to myself, I'm going to work on it some more during the tour and let it just be natural in everyday conversation. So once you get up, you can future pace with the patient. They can visualize themselves going through this process and you want to use that language, you know, so when you do this, when you come in for your smile design appointment, so on and so forth. So you want to see themselves visualize themselves go through this process. It's also a great way to build rapport. Again, you know, you're having that small talk, learning about their personal life, their family, keeping the conversation alive. And, and you still want to use that rapport where you're mirroring and matching, you know, going the same pace, all those things. As you go through this process, you're going to point out things about your practice that are unique, maybe not so unique, but you want to point out like the process. One of the things that I've noticed about people that don't accept their treatment plans is fear of the unknown. So this is going to answer a lot of questions for them because they're going to see themselves going through this process. So I usually like to show off a smile design room. And whether you have one or not, we can, you know, we always figure out like an operatory, how to show the patient where they're going to design their smile. Uh, we want them to get excited and it helps create urgency. If your doctor has any special credentials on the wall, we want to point those out, the oral surgeon. We want to point out the surgery suite, any special technology that we have. If you have a lab, you know, point that out, you know, that you can make adjustments quicker, you know, things like that. One thing that's really important is as you're walking through, you want the team members to be aware that you're doing a tour. Then they should know when they see you with the patient, like you're doing a tour. So they should be super friendly. Everyone's just saying hello. Make that person feel welcome. I make a point to go by the doctors, like they're in an operatory, stop and point out the doctor. And the doctor knows I'm on a tour. I want to make sure they look up and wave that patient and let them know they're going to see them in a few minutes, you know, when they're going to go in for their presentation. So you want them to get, you know, excited and feel comfortable with that team. And again, building that trust that we talked about. So somewhere along the way, you know, we make it back to the scan. That's the last part of the process. So when we make it back to the scan. I have already explained the scan at the very beginning of the consultation with the patient discovery. You know, that's a 3D image. So I've already gone through all that. I do like a quick refresher about what's going to take place. I like to sit the patient down myself as the treatment coordinator and the actual scan, get them situated, take their jewelry. And then the assistant will come, basically press the button because it's not something that I was able to do as a treatment coordinator. But at this point, I am now going to hand the patient off to the assistant so that I can go download the doctor of all the critical information I gathered up in the patient discovery. So I like to do the scan last. Again, you want to make sure you're keeping those anxiety levels down, letting the patient still feel open where they could talk and let them feel light. So I save the scan for the last part of it. I just want to like jump in and just highlight some of the things you said. Like you said, some really great golden nuggets. And I think one of the strongest ones in there is that future pacing. You know, like you're really helping them paint this future concept of them doing it just in the word choice that you did, instead of saying, okay, when a patient comes through, they come over here and then they go over there, you know, instead it's like, when you, when you come in, you know, when we're helping you get your smile, this is where we'll bring you. That's so powerful. Just that mental image of somebody like actually doing that and taking that step, probably very empowering from them and helps them see themselves moving forward. And the more they can see that, then the more they're going, you know, the more likely they're able to move forward. That's so powerful. It is. And it's a small nuance, but it has a big impact, you know, when you come in for the day of your surgery, so on and so forth. And it's really easy to think about everything that you're probably would just say, like you said, you know, when the patients come in, it's really easy to take it and just transform it to future pacing verbiage. It's a completely different experience. I love that. I love that. And the whole concept of like minimizing that anxiety, making it fun and light and leveraging that sometimes like it's true. I've heard that before where sometimes some people, if you just are sitting down and staring at each other, they don't always feel as comfortable as like when they get up and you're more like by their side, you know, instead of like staring at each other. 
I can see why for some people that could help them break the ice and allow you then to ask, maybe even ask the question again, or, you know, ask it in a different way. It's like, so what brought you in, you know, like as you're walking down the hall, you know, what, do you have something coming up in your life? Like, why are you deciding to move forward now? And all of a sudden they're just like, well, this, you know, my daughter's wedding's coming up. And they didn't disclose that earlier, but you now have an opportunity as you're walking down the hall and just chit chatting, you're right. They do. They start talking about their families. They start talking about their career, you know, their hobbies, things like that. They start opening up. And then from those things that they start telling you, you're like, oh, you know, I think there's something there. You know, drill down a little bit, ask some follow-up questions. A lot of times, you know, once they get up and start feeling freer, they're going to become more open. Did you ever, I'm going to use the term prime the pump a little bit on somebody that was closed off where you said, well, sometimes people come in because they have something big coming up in their lives, like a wedding or, you know, some big event that they want to get ready for, you know, like, do you have anything like that? Have you ever primed it like that a little bit? So I'm always looking for three different urgencies, time urgency, health urgency, and financial urgency. So when I get to my time urgency and the scripting, we're in that process, I do say something sort of like that. I kind of frame it as, you know, I always like to let the doctor know as far as scheduling and stuff, if you have anything special coming up that we should keep in mind. So we can get you in the schedule appropriately and plan this out, you know, the right way so that we have everything done in time. Is there anything coming up, like a special birthday? Maybe you did some time off work that you had, or maybe you're really busy at work and we need to figure out, you know, some things to move around. So if there's anything like that would be good for me to know. That's when I do that. So it's not even just a special event. It's time off work. Maybe they don't know how to take time off work and get this done. So it's like, let's talk about time. So that's kind of that checkbox I want to make sure that we hit. Mm-hmm. And I want to hit on all three of those, you know, in the consultation. And I know that's more of that discovery phase. I was intrigued with what you said, how sometimes just getting up and moving around and walking along that enables you to open up that dialogue a little bit or just from a new angle. And so that's great. Thank you for sharing that, Robin. Great insight. So now we're at the scan. Walk us through that next part and then into the next phase. So the scan, one thing that I invite to do is when I'm on this tour, because again, I was telling you that I wasn't able to push the button. You know, as I'm walking to the chore, I always alert, you know, an assistant that, hey, I'm going to be at the scan soon. So it's kind of like we meet eye contact and we know that's where we're about to meet. So then it seems seamless. And again, the patients are like, you know, these people have it together. So assistant comes over, I introduce them to the patient. I see something like if they have an anniversary coming up or something exciting, I'll share the information. I'm not going to give them a whole download of everything the patient's going to go through. So that's uncomfortable. So I try to share something that it's exciting. Like we're excited, you know, she's got a birthday coming up. Something that assistant can take and continue talking about. Again, I like to set them down, get them situated and answer any questions they may have. Let them know that, you know, how long it's going to take and it's low, you know, radiation. A lot of people ask questions about that, you know. So I really try to make sure they're comfortable. My goal is though right now is to get to the doctor's office. Because I need to do the download and I like to pull the scan up for the doctor, which I know we're about to touch on soon. I try to make it quick and brief and just highlighting a couple things because I don't want to say the same thing over and over again, but just highlighting a couple of like set them down. So we're going to get the 3D image of your jawbone. So the doctor can plan prep for your surgery and, you know, assess whether you are a candidate for implants or not. So just a couple little things I'm touching on as I'm putting them in but not a really long explanation. Got it. And then at this point, they get their scan. Mm-hmm. Does the assistant or do you, like who walks them back to the consult room? So the assistant will walk them back to the consult room. Now, this is the time you do not want to give the patient idle time. This is a really big deal. They could get on their phone right now, start texting their husband, their sister, their brother, their That's friend. Everybody does, right? Yes, and everybody's going to be that, you know, Demi Downer naysayer. Oh, wow, it's so expensive. Even if you haven't got a price yet with, you know, people can say, well, you make sure you can get three opinions, things like that. Or I heard that's really expensive. Just things that plant that negativity, you know, in their mind. So we want to try and keep them away from that the best we can. So there's a couple things that you can do. My favorite is to actually have a video on the monitor of a patient testimonial going through this process. 
And then a message from the doctor and a smile reveal. And you want this video to be about maybe seven to 10 minutes long, something like that, because you can edit some of these videos together. Maybe you have them already on your website and you just need a team to edit some of these, you know, so you put it on. When I set the patient down, you know, I have the assistant set the patient down and say, you know, I hear I'm going to share with you a story. This might help answer some questions that maybe we didn't answer for you or just, you know, hear from a patient what it's like to go through this process. I think this will be very meaningful for you to watch. So I turn it on, leave the room, or I'm sorry, have the assistant turn it on and leave the room. So that I think is the most powerful way to do it. If you can do that, have some before and after photos out there or any sort of patient education materials that you can have. As you can see, as I'm telling you, the video is pretty powerful. I've come in and seen patients with tears down their face. And so it's again, it's like you're taking, when you have that video, you're taking like advantage of all this emotions that you've already brought up. So it's going to have a really big impact at that moment for them to watch this because they just shared all that stuff with you. And now they're seeing your patient share that and share the same things and then watch them go through this process. So I think keeping them entertained in some way before and after materials is a mess. Even you know, if the assistant could sit down with them, if they have time and flip through you know, a before and after book, that would be great. And we want to maximize every time that we have, you know, the patient is there. That's great. And then while they're doing that, set that up, there will be some offices that don't mm-hmm. have that the treatment coordinator is the person pushing the button and they'll probably do the scan, walk right. them, and then say, I'll get right back, right? And then we go into the doctor download where the treatment coordinator and the doctor are coordinating and prepping the doctor to come in and which we will cover next time on our next episode. So hang in there, everybody more is coming. There's the doctor download, how to present pricing, et cetera, financing, which is huge. It's a massive piece of this. And we are going to discuss it all on our next episode. So again, hey, if you happen to be listening, we're on this mission to help as many people get new smiles as they can, change their lives and help as many doctors out there as we can. So please like and share, help us get the word out there. Robin, again, thank you for sharing your expertise with everybody today. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, my pleasure. Talk to you soon.